today's video, I'm going to uh, share and cover my favorite key takeaways from reading the book Results Without Authority from uh, Tom Kendrick. Um, so the book is about, it talks about three principal elements of control a project leader can leverage. The three being, uh, first, project processes, uh, second is influence, uh, and third is metrics and measurements. So project processes provide um, the structures and serves as organizational authority uh, so you don't have to use personal position or authority to assert your influence onto others uh, second influence uh, is your relationships and influence with your team the more you're able to sway uh, encourage or win over uh, those you're working with the better you will be able to uh, control your project third uh, measurement quantifies results and drives behavior so metrics are useful for uh, both understanding the status of your project and motivating uh, completion. So in this video, I want to share uh, two favorite key takeaways for project processes, uh, eight favorite key takeaways for influence, and five favorite key takeaways for metrics and measurements. Using position or authority is the worst form of influence. You want to influence people without using your position or authority. It is the worst influence, it's the type of influence, uh, the one you would see in dictatorships. So uh, starting with my first key takeaway, uh, influence leveraging on agreed upon processes. Um, so remember that people don't like being told what to do. You, uh, what you can do is leverage processes instead. Uh, using authority and position to force people to do things unwillingly uh, leads to resentment and um, demotivation. It's better to lead a project by helping people to f follow agreed upon processes and then to order them to do things. Uh, and to do that, you want to involve and encourage uh, your team members early on in the planning phase uh, for their inputs on these processes. When people see um, their influence on the project, uh, the project quickly shifts from someone else's project to our project. Uh, basing the decisions on team consensus and processes enables you to enforce them without the need to pull rank and position. Um, my second favorite key takeaway for influence is macro-management uh, and allow autonomy. Avoid micromanagement. Uh, autonomy is about letting people decide how to do their work. Um, wise project leaders <coughs> encourage people to use whatever methods work uh, best for them and, and the leaders avoid micromanagement. Micromanaging people just annoys people. Um, my favorite third key takeaway for influence is informal, casual communications. Uh, influence and relationship uh, depend on frequent, casual interactions. Uh, if, you, if you act too formal, uh, you distance yourself from your teammates, it causes a rift. Uh, you want to be on the same level, um, the same playing field as your teammates. Um, so that they can feel comfortable and be able to connect with you. So often you will learn more about your project status and roadblocks through informal uh, discussions than from uh, formally collected project status meetings. Uh, you want to approach uh, your teammates one-on-one -on -one as equals, leveling any differences in terms of position, at least for the duration of the discussion at hand. Uh, this applies whether if you're speaking uh, to someone more junior to you or uh, if you're speaking to someone more senior to you. Uh, you never want to speak down to someone, nor do you want to pander uh, to anyone above your position. Fifth favorite key takeaway for influence is humor. Using humor, uh, cultivating an appropriate sense of humor is a good way to increase your likability. Uh, you don't need to be a natural born comedian uh, to share a short or a humorous story uh, appropriate to a meeting. Uh, getting people to laugh or at least smile is an excellent stress reliever and can be of great help in maintaining uh, morale and working through difficult situations. Uh, showing you're not overly serious uh, all the time is a good way to connect better with your team and improve relationships. My sixth favorite key takeaway for influence is being friendly and helpful. Uh, influencers are generally friendly and helpful. Uh, friendly so that they are, are approachable, uh, helpful so that people are willing to listen and be influenced by them because of the value that they provide. Experienced leaders will help with requests whenever possible, uh, including small ones because they understand the recip reciprocity principle. Uh, when you help someone, they will want to naturally return the favor. 
uh, people who are cheerful and use humor uh, to good effect are more influential than those who are grumpy and aggressive. Uh, my favorite fifth key takeaway for influence is saving face for teammates. Uh, good leaders protect their teams. Uh, although criticism of individuals may at times be necessary, an effective project leader uh, commits to never taking action or joining in uh, criticism, but working with the team to find solutions. So even if fault, fault is found, a good leader will commit to handling things one-on-one -on -one or within the team to minimize any external consequences. Uh, be unflaggingly loyal to your team members and avoid all public criticism. Uh, keep negative feedback or any kind of uh, constructive criticism one-on-one -on -one and pull them aside if possible. You want to save face uh, for your teammates. Saving face for people is important. My sixth favorite key takeaway for influence is integrity and loyalty. So influence also relies on how people perceive you. Uh, your credibility with others depends on their uh, believing that you, you mean what you say being straightforward and conveying uh, information as accurately and truthfully uh, as you're able to is important, uh, but you enhance your influence even more by showing integrity, delivering uh, what you say you'll do. Uh, a, a reputation for credibility and integrity, particularly inside your project team, significantly increases your influence. Uh, loyalty, trust, and good relationships within your team are essential. In the midst of problems, work to keep the focus on problem solving and recovery, not on personal attacks and uh, blame storming. Establish strong rela social relationships in which you and your teammates don't want to disappoint each other. Uh, by demonstrating your loyalty first, you will naturally earn your team's loyalty. The seventh favorite key takeaway is lead by example. Ensure that you're doing uh, as much or more for your project as anyone else and that you're not asking others to do things that you're not willing to do or at least try to do yourself. Um, my favorite eighth key takeaway for influence is provide a reason for each request. The word because appears to lead all the list. You always gain more cooperation if you provide reasons for uh, your request is particularly when the reason directly relates to something that the other person cares about. Uh, when you ask anything of anybody, always formulate your request with a because statement followed by a reason and whenever possible, find a reason that the other person responds to favorably. Uh, moving on to measurement, uh, my first favorite key takeaway for measurement is identify what managers care about, uh, quick high level summaries. Uh, providing current status of your project is essential and doing it well can be a source of substantial influence. When things are going well, people are impressed with your work and your team. If things are not going well, describe the situation and show uh, what you're doing to recover uh, provides appropriate visibility and assists you uh, when you must enlist help. Uh, increasing the visibility of your accomplishments that matter to your managers or stakeholder raises your profile with them and improves, improves your influence. Uh, provide frequent high-level project summaries that are brief easy to read, uh, succinct, and to the point, and uh, short. Ongoing visibility, ongoing visibility. Don't force, don't force your uh, co correspondence to guess what you mean. State things clearly and avoid sending incomplete information that forces people to seek uh, clarification. Your influence improves when you communicate well. Always reread what you have written before you send it. Um, check for possible misunderstandings, mistakes, or anything that, be, that could be read differently than you intend. My second favorite key takeaway for measurement is start with accomplishments. Uh, focus on important accomplishments, current issues, and significant next steps. So those three in that order. Accomplishments, current issues, and significant next steps. Set the sequence of information in your reports to lead with accomplishments. Emphasize the positive. Uh, if you lead off with problems, issues, and other negative news, it can cause a lot of it can cause a loss of confidence in you and your team, and severely interfere with your future influence. Reporting on issues and problems can even be an opportunity to expand your influence, as long as you consistently include. Um, 
a recovery a recovery plan uh, showing that you are in control. Uh, your projects your project status report underpins your control before you send it read it uh, read it over carefully uh, proofread it for errors but also focus on your message if parts of your report can be read with more than one meaning rewrite it to make it unambiguous uh, remove any unnecessary pessimistic or negative thoughts because what you think uh, about your project is contagious uh, if you communicate confidence people will share it uh, if you communicate doubts, people will become depressed and start looking at a cliff to jump, jump off. Also, remove all personal information or um, criticism concerning your team members. Finally, in written communications, uh, never miss a chance to recognize contributions by your teammates. Uh, both within and outside your team, recognition is motivating. Uh, naming names and making contributions visible can substantially uh, improve your chances of uh, receiving cooperation and commitments for the remainder of, of um, your project and even beyond. So, I mean, <coughs> sometimes you may even uh, encounter and uh, meet with some of your teammates again for a future project. And how you exit the project, if you exit the project in grace, uh, this can be very beneficial for you in the future. My third favorite uh, key takeaway for measurement is project measurements and aggregate. So one possibility for minimizing public embarrassment or worse is uh, reporting your project measurements in aggregate. So this is, for example, if there's certain parts or components of your project that is not doing as well, um, or at least for individual team members of your team, you can uh, report you can report your project as an overall status rather than focusing on that specific component that is not doing as well. Um, of course eventually your project measurements still will have to be uh, will have to be disclosed if questioned upon however because you are the project leader uh, project leaders need to have thick skin and should be able to provide information such as the recovery plan and how uh, you know the recovery or or the action plan to improve this specific component if it is not doing well uh, my fourth fee fourth favorite key takeaway for measurement is minutes of important meetings. So promptly follow up conversations with written summaries and meetings with minutes. Uh, email them out to members of your meeting. So uh, if, you're, if there is an important meeting with important people going on, uh, either you or you can ask a member of your team to record the minutes of these meetings so that uh, you have a reference, you have a reference and full visibility and transparency to go back on these to go back on these topics that have been discussed so everyone is on the same page. Uh, my fifth favorite key takeaway favorite key takeaway of measurement is activity closure index. It's useful to have uh, some some form of activity closure index. Uh, so a ratio of activities that have been closed or completed. Uh, so far in comparison or versus the number of remaining outstanding uh, tasks to be completed. Uh, moving on to processes, my first favorite key takeaway for process is focus on a single task at a time. Uh, com complex knowledge work involves deep concentration and dealing with frequent interruptions uh, results in inefficiency, errors, and uh, stress. So recovering from a single uh, disruption during intense concentration, uh, figuring out where you were before the intrusion and coming back up to full mental speed takes about 20 minutes. Uh, if you're in deep concentrated work, uh, turn off your emails, but your status to no disturb um, are some ways to maintain your focus. My second favorite uh, process uh, key takeaway is keep meetings concise and actionable. Unfortunately, status meetings are usually a time sink. Uh, if you must have them, focus on discussions that are important and matter to those that are in the call. You can focus on three things. Uh, first, noting significant accomplishments and recognizing the people who were responsible. Uh, second is conducting a quick review of what lies ahead for the project. And third, summarizing any expected issues, uh, roadblocks, barriers, and possible solutions. Your team will find project meetings useful and attend them willingly if you uh, begin meetings on time and keep them short uh, and end them as early whenever possible. Uh, keep the meetings that you do do uh, hold efficient. Uh, 
uh, organized and as sh short as possible. That brings us to the end of the video. If you guys found the video helpful or any of the key takeaways, consider giving it a like. Um, if you guys have any key takeaways that you'd like to share, I would love to read them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to stay tuned for future uh, videos uh, in regards to books and summaries, uh, consider subscribing. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.